Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And boy, what a first couple of weeks to the 2022 season has been for special teams coach, special teams coordinator, and assistant head coach, Darren Simmons. Oh, Clark Harris goes down, tears his bicep from his elbow, covering a punt. Man, it's weird to see Clark Harris not suiting out in front of a locker, getting ready for a game. He's been doing it for so long. But to Darren Simmons' credit, Cal Adamitis, he got ready. Cal Adamitis performed exceptionally well against the Cowboys, and he's going to be ready to have a, a strong season. There is no question about it. We're going to talk to Darren Simmons about that. We're going to talk to him about what, what he's looking at with the New York Jets, the upcoming opponent in terms of special teams. They have the leading punt return in the National Football League challenge every single week for every phase, offense, defense, special teams. Nobody knows that more than Darren Simmons. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And we're in our studios at First Star Logistics, which are outstanding. And we have a very special guest, an outstanding guest as well. Bengals special teams coordinator, assistant head coach, Darren Simmons. Coach, I'll tell Good you what. Me. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, my, my, my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. And and I'll tell you, um, <laughs> it's been a wild couple of weeks for you, hasn't it? I mean, take, take me through what it was like for you in the opener when you found out that Clark Harris had indeed, you know, torn that, that bicep trying to make a tackle covering a punt. Well, obviously <laughs> there comes a lot of apprehension when you, you know, you're relying on the, it's, it's not like it is in high school football or college football where you got, you know, multiple long snappers on your roster in, in like in, in college football, they have, you know, two or three guys on the roster that, that can do it. Uh, they have the, the starting guy and then maybe a walk on and then, you know, another walk on. We don't, we don't have that chance. We've got one. And then a guy who, uh, um, you know, does it on an emergency basis and, you know, this has probably been the most unusual year for that because we've had a couple long snappers in training camp. So that meant, you know, Clark Harris and Cal Adamitis are getting all the reps. Um, we've got a competition going all really through OTAs and, uh, um, you know, through training camp and even a preseason games. You know, a, a year ago, we, we got uh, CJ Ozone was our backup. We got him a couple snaps in a preseason game to get him some live reps at it. But it was just more difficult to do that this year other than, you know, getting guys like, Mitch Wilcox, uh, you know, getting him reps before practice. It's difficult to throw him in during team periods when, you know, I'm trying to get these other guys ready to go, the, the uh, Clarks and the Cows uh, going. So it's, it was difficult to, to uh, you know, mimic those situations for him. You know, I, I thought he'd come in uh, after they told me that Clark had gotten hurt and, you know, asked him what the severity of it was. And they said, well, hey, we think he ruptured his bicep. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> I know what that means. That's That's not a good thing. And so I, I honestly, it was, just, it happened to be his right bicep. I actually asked him if he could snap left-handed, you know, because he can, he, he's a good athlete. He can do that. We've messed around doing that type of stuff. And yeah. And uh, I think he, they took him into the locker room and he actually tried to do it left-handed and just couldn't do it. So uh, we had to go with, we, we, with Mitch, you know, I, I had confidence in Mitch that he could do it. Um, you know, he's taken a lot of reps at it and, you know, throughout the years in practice, he just didn't have a ton of reps this preseason. Um, you know, and, and uh, uh, it, it goes down to it, it comes down to the PAT. And, and I certainly thought that uh, um, he did a good job handling the first PAT. Uh, you know, the, the location when the snap was good is a little softer. Yeah, probably it's not it's going to be softer. It's not going right. to be the same, you know, tempo and timing as what you have with, with Clark or even Cal in there. And, and uh, but, you know, like, like I said last week, it wouldn't matter to who was in there or what snapper was in there. That, it was a protection issue on the PAT. It, it wasn't it had nothing to do with the operation of the snap and the whole. Yep. And you see the kick come off Evans foot, the kick's going right down the middle. So it was clearly a protection issue um, that, that caused that. Now, certainly the the uh, a field goal the snap in overtime, um, you know, we, we, we kicked it on third down, uh, trying to give ourselves a buffer right there in anticipation if there was some type of bad snap, we had fourth down to still get the ball off. And, sure. and uh, you know, the snap was a little high. Um, it, it wasn't terribly high, but it was, it was high. It's higher than normal, higher than, than what we're used to for sure. But, I've seen Kevin make that play and I've seen Nevin make that kick a hundred times. And, 
you know, I, I would certainly expect them if we had that opportunity again, I would certainly expect them to do that, you know, and make that play. But, but I, I expect those two to make that play. I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, Mitch is put in a, in a very difficult spot. You know, he, he, certainly he uh, did, did fine. He did okay. Um, you know, the, the play I probably had more apprehension about was the pump play. I mean, you know, in overtime, we, we got to punt it there on fourth down and, and Pittsburgh's a rush team. They like to come after a slot. And I thought he snapped that ball perfect. It was it was right on the money. Kevin did a good job getting the punt off. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, it was a touchback. But, uh, yeah, it, it's quite of a range of emotions to go through. It's never happened to me in, in 25 years in the league to have that happen. And, uh, you know, it, it, it picked a hell of a time to happen. But um, it's part of the game. Injuries happen, um, you know, and, and uh, now we got to adjust to move forward. So Evan McPherson, he was very uh, despondent about this in the 29-yard field goal. He said, yeah, I can kick that thing left foot, and I got to make that kick like you like you mentioned. You've seen him. Um, but I, I guess when you couple the protection issue where he's like, all right, well, maybe I better increase my tempo. And then when he saw Kevin have to leave his crouch to, to get the snap, might have thought, well, do I even have to increase the tempo more? Did he get to the ball a little early? Did he have to wait? You know, for the for the placement was the, was the timing thrown off for all the other stuff that had happened prior to him actually striking that yeah. ball? Do you think? Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I, I think that uh, you know the, the tempo of the snap is a little slower, so he's naturally going to be faster to the ball. He he leaves at exactly the same time. It would be like uh, you know somebody um, lobbing a pass to somebody versus some versus somebody throwing it on a rope. You know, the, the ball yeah. just gets there a little quicker. Um, in this case, it got there just a little slower. Um, I, I certainly told him you need to make sure you leave on time and, and, and the one in overtime, it's just got to be up to us. We got to, we got to have great execution of getting the hold down, getting the ball off. Cause obviously I knew the protection was an issue to play before. And, uh, uh, we certainly didn't want that to happen again. So, you know, I, again, I, I think it goes to show you how important the, uh, chemistry and the tempo that those guys yeah. have and develop with one another, how critical that is and mm -hmm. how, how much of a part of the success even a year ago that uh, they were part of, how important that was, you know, for that to be consistent. And when it gets thrown off just a little bit, it really affects things a lot, it does with, as it does with anything. But again, like I said before, it, we have two really good players in that spot, and Kevin and Evan, and and uh, I, I would hope that, that they could make that play. You know, I, I, I want to put the pressure on them to make that play. Kevin said, you know, I knew I could handle that snap, and I knew I could get down to the spot. And yeah. he looked like he got it down to the spot that he pointed, you know, before yeah. the operation. And he, he was going to point there and he got the ball there. So yeah. you you had no problem with him just falling on it and living for another snap or whatever. No, oh, yeah. That's something we talked about before the play. We said, yeah, we're going to kick this on third down. That way, if there is, God forbid, a, a, a poor snap, all you could do is fall on the ball. Um, you know, and, and we kick it again, do the same thing on fourth down. We just got to back it up a little bit. But. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we discussed it on Monday. He said he felt like he, you know, it wasn't that much. It didn't throw the tempo or the timing off that much. Um, obviously, it, it did a little bit <laughs> or, or, you know, we, we would have made the kick. But, right. yeah, again, I, I do believe that he got the ball down on the spot. Did it, was it, did it look and feel different to Evan? For sure. It was absolutely different than one he'd probably ever seen, you know. And, frankly, I mean, from the time the ball – what people probably don't know, from the time the ball snapped until the time the, that Evan's foot touches the ball on a field goal play is about 1.25, 1, 1. 1.26 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if that snaps, it is, you know, even a tenth slower um, than what a normal one is, that, that's that's like, uh, you know, a monstrous amount of time to him just in his timing and tempo. And, yeah. and you know, like I said, again, I, I think it is the, the, the uh, um, location of the snap – Spooked him a little bit and threw up his concentration and, you know, flinched a little bit when he got to the ball. And we, and we just missed the kick. We just misplayed the, misplayed the play, unfortunately. So you mentioned the uh, the punt snap that Mitchell Wilcox uh, handled well. Um, of course, there's a question about, and you've already addressed this, but if you could address it again for us uh, and our listeners and viewers here, it was like 15 seconds, I guess, on the, on the, on the play clock or something yeah. like that when – when the ball was snapped in a perfect world, you know, if Clark's there, you get him up there over the ball and he, you know, he's looking at the play clock and getting it down to very yeah. and right before the thing's going to run out or whatever, he's going to snap it and, and, and sure. get a play made. Um, Mitchell Wilcox was the, was it, was the huddle broken too early 
in a perfect world, you would like to have kept that huddle intact longer. So Mitchell gets to the over the ball, doesn't have to wait over the ball, just gets up there and snaps it, and the, and the play clock's down lower. Or you don't want him hovering over that ball too long, do you? Probably a combination of both, honestly. You know, I, I think on the field goal snap, um, uh, the one in overtime, the one that was a little bit high, I, I think he stood over the ball for too long. So for if people can imagine, you know, and, and you probably know this too as, as an offensive lineman, if you're in your stance forever, you know, your old quads, the your your butt, I mean, everything starts locking up because it's because of the, the, the all the blood, the, the lack yep. of cancer flows there, and the, you know, your legs start to straighten out, and you know, they're you're trying to take the tension off your legs. And I think that's some of what happened on the field goal play. I think Mitch stood over the ball, he's in his snap or he's in his stance for too long. You know, his head's down, he gets a bit of a head rush, and and the blood flows to his head, and ball went a little bit high. And, and I was certainly concerned about that happening on a pump play. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if Clark or Cal were in there, we could just, you know, they certainly would have known to stand over the ball and, uh, you know, not snap it. They would have never grabbed the ball. Um, you know, somebody who's doing that for the first time in his life, that's a little different. You know, yeah. yes, I do believe we broke the huddle a little bit too soon. Um, but, you know, the, the the biggest fear I had, I just want I just wanted things to be as normal as possible for Mitch. Just we could execute the snap. Yes, I wish we would have held him in the huddle just a little bit longer before we broke the huddle to run a little bit more time off. Uh, the clock and then you know obviously we, we talked about a lot and I talked about our PP with Mike Thomas you know when we get over the ball just we don't have to address the ball we can stand over it in our formation we don't have to get down in a stance you know and, and Mike could control that by watching the game clock I, I think he was more concerned about you know Mitch just getting the snap off and executing the protection and giving him as much time as you know he needed to address the ball and get ready to go I just wish it would have been less I, I wish we would have handled that a little better for sure and certainly would have, have uh, you know, given them less time with the ball for sure. So that game is over. Now you have a, a, a long snapper on the practice squad. And I asked Cal, um, actually, just earlier this week, why um, did you decide to stay with the Cincinnati Bengals? I mean, you, you get waived. I'm sure your agent, there was activity. He goes, yeah, oh, yeah, there was. I, he said, I, I told him I didn't even want to consider it, though. I said, really? I said, why? He said, because of Darren Simmons. He goes, you know, I, I wanted to stay with the best special teams coach in the in the National Football League. I like the situation here. I really like the organization. I really have a ton of respect for, for Darren Simmons and, and what he's he's all about. And this is where I wanted to be. I said, oh, that's phenomenal. I tip my cap to you to be able to get your uh, Drew Crispin to stay with the Bengals on the practice squad and, and Cal to stay on the Bengals in the practice squad to have two – reserves in case you, you know, you get some age on your deep snapper and your punter. And as it turned out, it was, man, you, you were, you, you were foreshadowing things. I mean, you saw things that, that could have, could have taken place and you just bring Cal up and get him ready. So my, my kudos are, are big to you coach. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy that uh, we were able to, you know, I, I, I developed a good relationship with Cal. I started back when I worked him out at, at Pitt. Um, you know, I worked him out uh, early in the morning there. It was cold as hell in Pittsburgh uh um it's freezing cold actually and and i've been up to, to, to uh, at iup um to see my daughter uh on, on a weekend and we spent the weekend with her she had a volleyball tournament and uh on my, my way back it just so happened that i was able to stop through pit and worked out cal and and so we spent a couple two hours or or, or so together um you know we it started our relationship or we got to know each other at the combine you know I, i'm fortunate I'm, I'm the coach that gets to be on the sideline or down on the field <laughs> Well, we have the punting and kicking workout, and so it, it's it's nice to be able to develop relationships with those with the punters and the kickers and the snapper. You know, it, it's a high stress um, spot that they're in when they go to the combine, and uh, you know it, it's always unique when we go play these teams or other teams that those same punters are on who are at the combine. It's always good to go say hi to them and and they remember you, and so it, it's it's good to develop those relationships that way because you sure. know. In the end, that's really what business business is about. Yeah, it's about X's and O's, but it's about developing relationships with these guys, getting them to trust you and, and know that you have their best interest in mind. And, uh, you know, I, I'm glad. I think Cal recognized, you know, what the situation was. He knew that Clark was getting older, you know, and I, I'm just it was a it was a great thing for us to be able to get him to convince him to come here in college for agency because he he had options. He had options at, at other places um, that, uh, you know, it's arguable whether they had a bigger need than we did. Uh, at that spot, but but he chose to come here. I think because of the relationship we developed, 
And, uh, you know, it was also a good thing that you know, as part of the NFL rules, now you can Zoom with these guys. And, and that's been a good, useful tool for us to, to be able to, to have interaction through Zoom throughout the offseason prior to the draft. Again, it's, it's a way for us to talk through things and, and for us to get to know each other. So we had a couple of really good Zoom sessions together. Um, you know, he, I thought he did a good job in the preseason for us. I, I didn't, you know, I, I felt that Clark was – um, had done a really good job of getting himself back in shape or getting mm-hmm. himself probably in the best shape of his life to mm-hmm. come back in and compete. And, and uh, I thought they both competed hard. Ultimately, we decided to go with the two veteran guys. You know, if, if it's not broke, you know, don't don't fix it type thing. And, and uh, obviously it broke week one and not right. the way we were anticipating it happen. But, uh, but I'm very glad that, that uh, Cal chose to stay with us and be on our practice squad and continue his development. You know, and, and I told him, I said, I, you're going to be the snapper here at some point, whether it's this year, whether it's in the future, whenever it's going to be. But you're, you're going to be the snapper here. And, you know, I want I want you to continue to to work with you know our system and, and get accustomed with what we do. And, you know, that way when that transition comes, it happens very easily. It just happened a lot sooner than what we anticipated. You, you just used a huge word when you were talking about your relationship and the word trust. And, and Cal used that word. I said, you know, what's your goal? He said, well, my goal is to have coach Simmons and, and my teammates trust me. You know, I, I want to do things right. I, I want to be a player that they can count on and I, I want to earn their trust. I mean, he was unbelievable, very mature. I mean, I, I, I'm like, yeah. oh, this, this guy's the real deal now. And, uh, and it, it was just good to see him execute the way he did. I like that little fourth and four head Bob too, mm-hmm. that kind of drew him off sides a little bit coach. I know, I know you're probably like, Hey, this, this will work, man. Get I, this don't, I, don't, right I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> know what you're talking about. <laughs> but I, I mean, now, before, yeah. getting, them, getting them to jump was, was pretty good. And then he, uh, you know, he was perfect on his five snaps to uh, Kevin uh, as a punter. And then also in, in, in the placement uh, scenario, how, if you had to guess how many hours did you and Cal spend together getting ready for the Dallas Cowboys because, you know, Bones, Bones likes to pressure you now. He'll, he'll, he'll rush the, the punter and everything as a special yeah. teams coach, Bones Fassel. Three block punts last year they had. They took two back for touchdowns, and it was flawless. I mean, you, you guys probably spent more time together than you spent uh, with Cal than you spent with your wife, didn't you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think it was kind of trial by fire for him. He, you know, when when Clark got hurt, I knew it was coming next week. We were going to face the Cowboys, and We've been working on a lot of their rushes really throughout the preseason. Um, and, and so I, I knew how difficult a, a task it was going to be for Cal. But he, you know, he really studied his tail off all week. You know, he, he prepared hard on Monday. Uh, we talked about we, we watched some of the looks on Monday. He came in, spent extra time on Tuesday watching him. He came back in on Friday after practice, you know, extra time, extra time in not scheduled meeting time is just extra time uh, or, or excuse me, Saturday. And uh, but he, so he really did a, a phenomenal job of getting ready. He could have told you all the tendencies of uh, whether it's Dorrance Armstrong or, or or Basham or you know any of their inside rushers. You know when they lined up right, when they lined up left. Did they go back across his face? Did they go vertical? It was all based on him. He had a he had a, he has meticulous notes. And you know I, I could ask. You know it, it's always great when you can when you ask. I, I think it develops. Uh, uh, you know like like Cal was talking about trust. When I can ask Cal what a guy is going to do before he ever does it in front of the whole team, and he can answer correctly and answer it with, with uh, uh, you know, with great a sense of, of uh, confidence, yeah. I think the rest of the team feels that too, and, and that's exactly exactly the way he was the whole week. So there was never, I, you know, I didn't doubt in my mind at all that that, that he was going to do fine because he spent the time, he, he he prepared as hard as anybody ever prepared he knew what was at stake for him. He, like you said, he wanted his most important part for him is just to gain the trust of his teammates. And, and I, I think he certainly did that on Sunday. Coach, you got another one uh, coming up. You got the New York Jets and, and uh, they, they lead the National Football League in punt mm-hmm. returns and they're in top five in kickoff returns. And it's because of this Berrios kid. He's averaging 15.3 yards per punt return, leading the league and 24.6 per kickoff return, fourth best in the NFL. Um, he, he's obviously a guy you got to, yeah, you got to figure out, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, he, he's he's a good little player. He has been for several years there. He's he's probably a guy that that, that uh, you know a lot of people don't know enough about, but he's a really good player. You know, he he got us on a uh, like a thirty yard kickoff return, I think, last year up in New York, right? Um, right before half, he he did a little naked bounce and uh, aborted the return and, and got a good play on us. So uh, he he was a a really successful guy. He he scored on a hundred and 
three yard kickoff return, I think last year also. So he's a good player. He will have our hands full, you know, not only with the protections, because this is also a team that likes to rush and, uh, and sometimes team rush to return it. If that makes sense. They, they try to put, apply pressure and make you get a lot of depth and protection. So it makes you get you know, later getting down the field in the coverage. And that's part of the, what they do with, uh, you know, their return team. So he'll be, he'll be a big task force again. Coach, you know, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, how hard is it? You bend over, you snap the ball to a to a holder or a kicker. Yeah, right. Holder or a punter. <clears throat> yeah, right. It's it's an easy thing. You don't know how good you have it till you don't have it anymore, right? I mean, it's one of those things. And, boy, you had to adjust. You had to adjust on the fly and then adjust to the adjustment afterwards. Yeah. And nobody uh, does it better than you, sir. That had to be a, 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 a few days there of angst. There's no question. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, yes, it was, uh, Sunday was not a very fun, the last Sunday was not a very fun day for sure. And, uh, you know, the quicker we can get that, taste that Pittsburgh game over mouth and, you know, and, and then get through the Dallas game, the, the better. And uh, now we just got to try to find a way to get yourself on track here and, and, and play with good execution and, and the punt game and the punt return game, really in, in all phases of special teams. And just just steady the, steady the ship a little bit here and, and we'll be okay. Final, final question, I promise. I mean, Overall, first two weeks, with all things considered, are you satisfied with uh, your performance of special teams? I mean, I know you're a tough guy to satisfy, but it was. Yeah. Has it been okay? No, I, I think we think we certainly. You know, we uh, we didn't perform. I think the way in general we wanted to perform on in game one against Pittsburgh. You know, we we had some issue with, with a uh, punt coverage play, um, or where we a couple guys get out of their field lane and guys doing things that they don't normally do. We had a couple of veteran guys that that. You know, did things that are uncharacteristic, and I think sometimes when when things aren't going well as a team, guys start to press a little bit and, and to to try to do more than what they really need to do instead of just relaxing and just controlling the things that they can control. And I think that happened a little bit on uh, week one against Pittsburgh. So you know, I was probably displeased, really displeased with the way we played against them. Um, I, I thought we settled down a little bit against Dallas and, and did better. Um, you know, we we. Uh, that we had a, a 20 yard punt return. I think we gave up right before the end of the half. Right. That, uh, you know, I never like to point the, the, the finger at anything or, or at somebody else other than really at myself, but I never been part of a play where there were really, there should have been potentially four fouls on Dallas on one play. <laughs> you know, Kevin got, Kevin got his leg ran into, um, they yeah. lined up over the top of Cal. They, they, uh, you can't line up anywhere inside the framework of his body. They, they covered him up. Um, Chris Evans got thrown, uh, he got held and thrown off the line of scrimmage. And then probably the most blatant one is, is Clay Johnson gets a, gets blocked right in the back about 40 yards down the field. So we still got to find a way to yard return all on that yeah. one play. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we still got to fight to, we, we still got to work to get better at those things that, you know, I'm pleased we, you know, um, we haven't had to cover any kickoffs. Evans been doing a good job of hitting kickoffs. We have, yeah. unfortunately we haven't got the opportunity to return any either. Um, but we, we got, but Trent got a 20 yard pump return. So, um, you know, it, it was, an, it was an improvement. Is it, is it still where it needs to be? No, not, not yet. You know, I think the unique part about special teams is you're going to have 27 to 30 plays and you got to win, you got to win all of them. That's our goal is to win, to win every single one of those. If you lose one or two of them, or you give something up on one or two of them, you know, it still leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So we strive for perfection and the closer we can get to that, the better I'll feel. Well, you mentioned uh, Money Mac, I think, has got 10 touchbacks, which is tied for the league lead, I think. And that guy, yeah. man, he can Stay strong. crush a football. Whew, Stay man. strong. Stay, Stay strong. strong. There you go. Coach, can't thank you enough. You got Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Um, thanks for everything you do. And uh, good luck this week. Go to New York and get that dub. Yep. It'll be good. It'll be good to get that taste out of our mouth. I hear that. Thank you, sir. Okay, you got it. We'll see you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.